So welcome back to the channel ladies and gentlemen and today I have a special feature at least I hope so well to my mind it's special anyway this is the Zemus SL45 uh, actually I have lusted uh, after this model for quite some time and I can't really figure out why since I've owned this model before several times along my you know phone history first one I got was in about 2003 and that was really well it wasn't a good example and then uh, afterwards it became a vintage phone and I got a couple of them and I actually sold them pretty well because I got them cheap and I managed to sell them quite well with a profit this is uh, well it's a special model and uh, really it, that's simply due to its scarcity because right now it's very difficult to get one uh, I paid 30 euros for this example and it's looking quite well though that is a pretty penny at least in my book it has several uh, nicks and uh, scratches along the bezel here but nothing too uh, worrisome like this small little crack in the bezel by the way, this is some kind of anodized uh, plastic with a metallic feel to it, but the rest of the chassis is plastic all the way. Interestingly enough, this phone doesn't show or hold any screws in its assembly. It's simply clicked in, and this is both a remarkable uh, feat of engineering for Siemens for its time, and also downside because when you open this thing up and force pry force these uh, latches here they tend to break and uh, it's just not the same this one I think though is pristine by the looks of it uh, and don't worry I'm not just going to show you the back here I also have a battery which quite interestingly ah uh, yeah so I seem to have managed to destroy the battery in process of charging it. It's now very swollen. Uh, that's quite a worrisome because I got this thing and the battery was actually in good nick, but it uh, I overcharged it, I guess. Maybe it will recover. Let's hope so. Um, I use this universal charger you know the Chinese model and I I left it too much uh, plugged in to the power socket with these pins connected to the battery and sadly the battery has fallen bit of a mistake on my side but I have tried to do this uh, you know uh, step by step so first time I left it two hours then I left it four hours and it kept charging and now I left it too much <laughs> yeah so anyway let's try to turn it on now the the uh, party piece of this phone is just that it's the first uh, phone mo it's the first mobile phone with an mp3 player let's see if it starts up fingers crossed everybody yeah so I'll have to get a sim card I'll do that in just a moment um, so we'll be right back Back, as they say so we're back with a test sim card I hope this works I don't think this uh, unit uh, is uh, locked in any uh, network but let's see now removing the battery is just simply uh, pressing on this latch here which is uh, built into the battery lid but this is plastic not metallic Anyway, uh, here is the antenna, the external antenna, which, funny enough, it extends all the way here. And you can see a little dent in this bump here. I believe somebody either dropped this thing or tried to remove the antenna tip. You can remove this, but I'll not try to um, molest this phone any more than it is. It's not looking bad per se, but it's not actually... Uh, you know pristine or in perfect condition but I am glad I got it because for 30 euros nowadays you cannot dream of getting an SL45 
maybe one that's just for parts. The only notable party piece which I mentioned before is that this phone is an MP3 player, first of its kind. And here is the proof. This is a Siemens MMC card. This is not an SD card, it's a multimedia card. For those of you old enough to remember, this was a Siemens patent and it actually can play MP3 files, though not on a speaker, just on the headset. And it does, this phone doesn't really have a jack port, it has a proprietary Siemens designed port, which sadly I don't own. And uh, thus, I don't think I'll be able to show you whether this phone plays MP3s or not. So let me just connect the SIM card and we'll get along, we'll get through our review, as they say. And this is gonna be a long one. I'm trying to keep things simple and enjoyable, but you know, maybe it doesn't show in my voice, but I am actually getting giddy with excitement for this phone. Uh, why? Well, as stated before, this is one of my dream phones. I don't know why I feel so attached to this thing because it's not the best in terms of build quality, in terms of features, it isn't even the quirkiest or the, the rarest of them all. But I sort of like it, I don't know why. Uh, as scarcity goes, this is right up out there with uh, the Nokia 8910, I would say, though it's not the same build quality, so don't consider that I'm comparing them as apples for apples. I'm just mentioning that you, if you want one of these things, be prepared to fork out about 100 to 150 euros for a good example and be ready to wait to get one. So let me just insert the pin into this trial SIM card. Right, here we go. Let's see if this works. Okay, so quick update. I haven't managed to uh, catch it on camera, but actually this phone turns on, though the battery is most likely gone, far gone by this uh, stage. Uh, I'll show you why, so I'll insert the pin again, 5972. Now, interestingly enough, when the phone is just um, turned on, but without uh, searching the GSM signal, it works just fine and the uh, uh, screen works and so on. So I press OK and you will be able to see that the, uh, the, uh, the writing here is actually a, a, it is actually a logo or a greeting and well when the phone tries to get the signal it simply depletes the battery and just dies off. I have managed to see the battery is actually showing 0% charge uh, in its icon. So really, yeah, the, the good news is I didn't burn the phone. So um, actually the, the battery itself was depleted and I didn't damage it by over uh, by trying to charge it uh, for a long time for an extended period so the handling is quite finicky and really this wasn't a huge market success even though the phone itself was uh, quite uh, you know at launch it was quite impressive and everybody wanted one but uh, in due time uh, people realized that uh, Siemens phones, particularly the this SL45, weren't the top of the range in their marketplace, which is sad somewhat. I, I always considered Siemens phones to be the underdog in the GSM arena, pun mostly intended, and really I was rooting for them. I don't know why, but I always felt a connection compared to Nokia. 
Funny how things go, now Nokia is uh, dead as well and reincarnated as an Android manufacturer with uh, some lower tier offerings, not what the Finnish giant was be way before, but that's just nostalgia and reminiscing on my part. So let's try to turn the phone once more without the SIM tray, without the SIM card installed. And you can see we can go to the menu and just uh, sample some things like audio and uh, maybe, just maybe try to uh, change the, the language to English. Now, funny enough, whenever I turn off the phone and remove the battery, uh, even if uh, the, so the language switches to German once more which shows that this thing doesn't hold any battery not even for um, simple uh, settings remembrance or uh, memory or so on you get the the idea so let me just try to get Sprache right here so it should be yeah, we should be able to switch it to English. Now the language is set to English. I don't know any German. Yeah, I wish I did, but I don't. So, yeah, the keys, uh, there's key tones. This is classic key click. Yeah, this is classic Zimas. Key tones, select. Yeah, this one is not such a great tone. So let's switch to the click. By the way, classic Zima's uh, setup for the menu, pressing red uh, or end call uh, exits you from a menu. But you did have this wonderful D-pad on top and additional buttons. Yeah, so as you can see, the battery is depleted and it doesn't really hold any other uh, mysteries, this phone. So it was just a quick walkthrough. I don't really think I can get a decent battery for this thing. So uh, hoping to uh, to get this to play MP3s uh, at this point is just uh, pointless uh, nostalgia and whatnot. But then again, I didn't buy it for that. I just bought it to have it in my collection and this isn't even to grow my channel. I'm certain that there are other videos of vintage phones and gadgets that will have done better than this uh, Zimas SL45. Here's hoping I'm wrong because I would like to get more subscribers and viewers. And that brings me to my next point. I need to grovel a bit and to beg for your attention. So please like and subscribe and consider I'm quite a long way with this channel but if you want to see more weird quirky and obsolete tech stuff like this Siemens SL45 I kindly ask you from the bottom of my heart to please subscribe and like my videos because I really need your help to grow this channel so thanks again for watching and see you in the next one bye bye